What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a dangerous response to the King's Gambit, which starts off with e4, e5, and now the move f4. Now, I'm just warning you guys, if your opponent plays the move f4, he or she is wanting you to take the pawn on f4, get an advantage in development, attack your king, checkmate your king quickly, and go home. That is what white is trying to do. I don't care who you're playing against. If your opponent is playing f4, their intent is to attack your king very aggressively. So what do we do here? Do we take the pawn on f4? Now, I do want to state, guys, that taking the pawn on f4 is actually not a mistake if you're well prepared. But oftentimes, white is comfortable in this situation. White is very comfortable with you taking the pawn on f4. In fact, that's why white plays it. And in chess, we don't want our opponent to be comfortable. When you're comfortable, that is when you're playing your best chess. And that's basically, guys, how chess styles come about. Now, Kasparov might not be very comfortable in a very quiet, closed position. But Karpov is very comfortable in that situation. Now, Karpov might not be very comfortable ruthlessly attacking the opponent's king with pieces flying everywhere. But guess what? Mikhail's Hall loves that kind of game. In fact, Mikhail's Hall almost seems to enjoy being down two, three, four pieces, right? So it all depends on your comfort zone. But for you players that play e5, that consider yourselves aggressive attacking players, and you don't really enjoy being attacked and only gaining a mere pawn for it, I recommend the dangerous move, d5. And here we see the folk beer counter gambit. Now, I'm just letting you know, at least for me, I was a king's gambit player and this is really probably the biggest reason I stopped playing the King's Gambit was this move d5. We're saying, look, we don't want to take the shield. We don't want white to have the sword. We're going to take the sword, give the shield to white, and we're going to attack the white king ruthlessly. And honestly, after this d5 move, it's going to be black that's the aggressor. There's really no way for white here to gain a huge attacking edge. Instead, it is black with the one attacking the white king. And honestly, guys, after d5, white can get in trouble very quickly. I mean, the big question here is which pawn should white take? Should white play e takes d5 or should white play f takes e5? Well, I can tell you guys something. Which one white does matters a lot. Let's take a look at f takes e5. I mean, that doesn't look like a like a bad move, but guess what? After queen h4, white is already losing this game. If the move g3 is played, we're able to play queen takes e4, attacking the king and the rook, so that doesn't work. And if the move king e2, we can now take on e4, forcing king f2, play bishop c5, and after d4, take another pawn, forcing king g3. Now we can play the move queen g6 check, and guys, at move 8, White is playing king h4. I mean, white is the one that is supposed to be attacking in the king's gambit. And at move 8, the king is already out on the h4 square. Now we're able to play bishop f2 check, forcing g3, play queen e4. And if king h5, we're able to play g6 check and pawn h6 with checkmate. And if the move bishop f4 is played, we can take that bishop off the board and take the queen. And guess what? At move 11, black has already won this game. So yes, guys, f takes e5 is a huge mistake, and black is completely winning after this move. What we're going to be going over in this video are the moves knight c3, knight f3, and the most popular option, e takes d5. Now, I think if white takes on d5 and white plays the game perfectly for 15 moves, we have a dead even position. But in all other variations, I definitely have the edge for black. Let's first take a look at the move knight c3. Now, with the move knight c3, the most popular option is the move knight f6. But black performs very well with the move d4, kicking the knight to e2. And now we're able to play the move knight c6, defending the pawn on d4 and the pawn on e5, and just pretty much naturally developing the knight. You guys can see after the move, knight f3, white is actually pretty cramped. And sometimes, instead of knight f3, white will first play the move d3, in which we simply develop with a move like knight f6. And after knight f3, 
play bishop g4. Notice, guys, how easy and how simple the system is for black, but it's also very dangerous. Let's say white plays a move like knight takes e5. Well, now we can take that knight back, and after f takes e5, play knight d7, take the pawn on e5, and after a move like queen d2, we can play c5 with potential c4 ideas. And guys, honestly, white's position is just really cramped. Any king's gambit player is not going to like having a bishop on f1, king on e1, rook on h1, knight on e2, queen on d2, and bishop on c1. No white king's gambit player is ever looking to reach a position even close to this. So we went over d3. What if a move like knight f3 is played? Well, now it's very easy for white to get in trouble as we play bishop g4, really putting some pressure on that knight on f3. And after a move like d3, we can now take the knight and play the move queen h4 check, forcing the king to d2. And now we're able to snatch the pawn on f4. Notice how the knight can't take that pawn because it is defended by the queen. And after a move like c3, we can play castle's queen side, securing the king position and activating the rook, having it pointed right towards the king on d2. And guys, this position is simply better for black. Guys, the next move we're going to go over is knight f3. And knight f3 is also a move that I think black is completely better. Here we can play the move d takes e4. And after knight takes e5, you know, guys, there's a lot of different options here for black. And the most popular is the move bishop d6. But there is a secret slash rare move here for black that really does give black the attacking edge with the move knight c6. And I think part of the reason this isn't more popular is because it gives black bad pawn structure after knight takes c6 and b takes c6. But guys, I looked it up in the database, and whenever this position is reached in master and grandmaster games, black has yet to draw or lose. Black has won 100% of the positions here. Yes, black does have some bad pawn structure, but in return gets an advantage in development and attacking chances, not to mention a very strong pawn on e4, controlling the light squares on d3 and f3. Let's say white plays a move like d4. Well, now we can naturally play the move rook b8, putting pressure on that b2 pawn. And notice now how this bishop on c1 is kind of stuck. It can't really develop, and therefore this rook can't develop. Let's say next white plays the move bishop c4. This is very logical. White really wants to castle, but guess what? We're not going to let white castle. We're going to play queen h4 check, and after g3, play queen h3, taking away the f1 square. And in chess, you can't castle through check. So here, white is forced to play a move like queen e2, attacking the pawn on e4, but there's no need to rush here. There's no need to freak out and play a move like queen f5. We can simply develop with knight f6, developing our piece and further supporting the pawn on e4. And after a move like knight d2, we can now play bishop g4. And here, white has a couple options. First off, guys, notice how much control black has over the light squares. g2, f1, f3, d3. I mean, all of these squares are really controlled by black and black has a very strong supporting cast with a queen on h3 bishop on g4 and a pawn on e4 all supported by the knight on f6 and here white as i said has a couple options one of them is to play queen e3 and try to hold on to the queen and the other one is to trade off let's first take a look at queen f1 now guys we're actually not going to retreat our queen with queen h5, but instead just keep naturally developing with bishop d6. Now, some of you are probably wondering, okay, yes, we just got bad pawn structure. We have a double isolated pawn on c6 and c7, an isolated pawn on a7, and now we're just going to give up our queen and give up all attacking chances. But here, guys, after queen takes h3, yes, usually if you give up your queen, the attacking chances drop. But here we still have some very good attacking chess. After bishop takes h3, and knight b3, we can now push our pawn up with h5 and h4. And really, there's no way for white to stop this. We can play h5, and after a move like bishop e2, play h4. And guys, just look at the activity of black's pieces. A very strong bishop on h3, a solid bishop on d6, a strong knight on f6, defending the e4 pawn, which is taking away f3 and d3. And the knight on f6 is also prepared to eventually make a knight g4 push, 
We have a strong pawn on h4 at some point ready to take on g3 and a strong rook on b8 putting pressure on the knight not allowing it to move or else this b2 pawn could drop. So guys, as I've said, black still has very good attacking chances as well as a space advantage. The more space you have chess, the more room you have to move your pieces around and therefore having a space advantage is vital in this game. So guys, as we went over, after the move queen f1, black still has some good attacking chess. But what if white decides to hold on to the queen with a move like queen e3? Well, honestly guys, I think that here, black is completely winning. We're going to play bishop d6, naturally developing, and yeah, we're giving up a pawn on e4, and now we're going to castle kingside. Now, yeah, again, at least when I first saw this line, I was going, okay, wait a second, white can take the knight, and after g takes f6, black has an isolated pawn, an isolated pawn, and two pairs of double isolated pawns. I mean, black's pawn structure is absolutely terrible, but guess what? We're about to hunt down the enemy king on e1, and there's really not much white can do from stopping this rook e8 idea. The best move white has is king f2, but here we play rook f e8, followed by rook e2 check, and black is completely winning this game. So guys, we just went over three of the most popular moves besides e takes d5. f takes e5 is obviously completely losing. Knight c3 is clearly better for black because black can push with d4 and get a space advantage, eventually even put the bishop on g4 and really put pressure on the white camp. And finally, we just went over knight f3, which is completely better for black in really all the variations reached. Now, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, the best move, and it's not even close, is e takes d5. Now, against e takes d5, there's a couple options that black has here. One of them is pushing with e4, and the other is playing e takes f4. Now, I'm going to recommend the move e takes f4. I think black has a much better game here, and honestly, black performs much better with this move. Now, after the move knight f3, again, guys, there's, you know, there's nothing too complicated about this. We're just going to keep naturally developing our pieces. We're going to play knight f6, and after a move like bishop c4, we're going to take on d5. And I do want to mention something. Let's say here white goes, okay, we're even in material. What if I play a move like c4? Well, if white plays a move like c4, we're now able to play c6. And yes, white can take the pawn on c6, and yay, white is up a pawn, but guess what, guys? Black has some very good attacking chess here. Let's say the move d4 is played. Well, now we're able to play bishop g4, and after bishop to e2, we can now play the move bishop b4 check, and after knight c3, play knight e4, and black has a much better game here. So white really doesn't want to try to hold on to the pawn on d5, and a better move is the move bishop c4, in which we can take on d5, and after castles, play bishop e6, followed by bishop e7, and after a move like knight c3, there's no need to panic. We can just keep developing with knight c6. And guys, if white plays perfectly here, white will play the move d4, and after castles, take on d5. Now, here white wants to take our pawn on f4 right, with the bishop on c1. White is down a pawn, so white wants to take the pawn, develop the bishop, and have an even material game. The only way to do this is to take the knight on d5 because the knight defends the pawn on f4. So here we're going to see knight takes d5, and after bishop takes d5, again, trade off. And now after bishop takes f4, we can play bishop d6, followed by rook a d8, play rook f e8, and after a move like b3, play f6, really locking down the g5 and e5 squares. And guys, here I would honestly give the position a dead even value. And I just showed you guys the best possible line for white. If we're going to play this move with d5, you know, f4 and play d5, and white plays perfectly, absolutely perfectly for 15 moves, and we reach a position where we have two strong rooks on the e and d files, a strong centralized queen on d5, a solid bishop on d6, and a strong potentially knight on c6, and this is the very best way to play for white, it's kind of hard to argue against this opening as long as you're comfortable with it. So guys, I do hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that I was able to help you guys in your preparation against the king's gambit. 
this is one of many options. I mean, after the move, F4, there's so many options here. One of them is taking on F4. I personally don't think black should do this because white is very comfortable in those lines. I think the best moves are D5 and Bishop C5. I'll also make a video on Bishop C5. And honestly, guys, after Bishop C5, white is very uncomfortable because white can't even castle kingside because that bishop takes the a7 g1 diagonal. Another idea is playing the move knight c6, and really guys, black has so many options here, but if I had to narrow it down, I would go with the folk beer counter gambit and bishop c5. So again guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it, and I'm wishing you guys a great day. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.